Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new paper crafting video. I am super excited today to be hopping along with the Fab Five. It's a group of five paper crafters who love to share their love of lawn fawn in videos and a Facebook group. And it's their one year anniversary, which means lots of giveaways. So check out the description box below. First, we're going to start with a card today. Now the theme of this hop is Halloween, birthday or Halloween anniversary so I'm going to make a platform pop-up card and I'm going to have a party at a pumpkin patch theme so um, this is not necessarily a tutorial on how to put together the platform pop-up but it's pretty easy so you can see how I'm putting it together here but also lawn fawn has a very good um, reveal video of this die set that you can follow along with just by going to their YouTube channel or their um, shop even they have the video there um, but here it's really easy. You add the tabs through the little slits and the you have two pieces that you attach together like so. And you can just see how easy it is as I'm putting it together. And there is a middle tab that you can add um, and you have to cut off the end of it at the score line so it fits in. But then you have three rows you can now add things to. There's also an add-on die that you can create like a backdrop for it. So I'm using that here and I'm doing some ink blending with black soot villainous potion and wilted violet to create a purple Halloween night sky I'm gonna go over this two times so it looks like this and then I'm gonna spritz it with water because I want to give that uh, sky kind of a nighttime look so first I splattered with water then I'm adding some pixie dust um, mine's very low so I took the topper off added some water and then I use it to splatter with a paintbrush next I'm adding dr. PH Martin's no bleed white I added a little water to that I did some really fine droplets with my scraggly brush and then watered it down a little more and added some larger drops so I'm gonna set that aside to dry and add some things to my box while I'm waiting and that is the grass and that just gets added on with some foam or a uh, double-sided tape and then you can see the platform pop up pops up and down now in that same die set for the platform you have these die that cut out panels for the outside of the box so I'm gonna do four of the squares and one of the rectangles so the rectangle is gonna go on the back side I'm gonna do something different on the front and then the panels that go on the side I'm going to give them a little pumpkin face and I'm using the jack-o-lantern add-on for the tiny gift box which you will see that die set again because I'm also going to make party favors and a gift tag in this video so there you can see they all have the same face but I tried to um, glue them on a little bit different some a little wonky so I have that done and now my backdrop or sky is dry so I can add that now we need all the things that are going to fill up this platform pop-up so I am bringing in this costume party stamp set now this is an older one I just love it and this little kiddo dressed up as a pumpkin was the perfect thing for my pumpkin patch party I made two jack-o-lanterns with this set because there are two different faces and I just had to stamp out some candy corns because I think they're the cutest Halloween candy ever I love them I think they're so cute I don't mind eating a few but that's all I can handle is a few. They're so sugary. So I am coloring up my pumpkins. You can see my colors there, but I started out with YR27. My midtone was YR7 and my lightest was YR02. And then for my stem, I'm using green. So I started out with BG99 and blended it out, blended it out with the G29 marker. And then you just need a yellow, an orange, and then leave the top white for your candy corn. Then I use the same colors on my little costume as I did on the pumpkins. And it's just a really good combination. I wanted to have a really dark um, shadow color because it's kind of a night scene. So I made it a little darker than maybe I normally would. And I love how it turned out. So he's getting some black hair with N8 as the darkest N6 as my midtone. And then for a really nice highlight, I brought in the N4. And then for the skin tones, I have my E35 as my darkest and my E13 as my lightest. And he is all colored up and so cute. And I colored him to look Look like my best friend's grandson because he's the most adorable little boy <laughs> and his birthday is October 30th 
So that's what kind of inspired me to do a pumpkin patch party. I believe he's turning five. So it would be a really fun thing. He would love it to go to the little place we call the farmstead and have a birthday party, I think. So there you go. That's my inspiration. All right. So I die cut out all the things, all the candy corns even, and I'm setting that aside and bringing in the brand new stitched pumpkin die set. And I'm going to die cut these from two different shades of orange. And then I'll cut out the stems, which by the way, the die for the stems has stems that can go left or right. You get to choose. That makes me so happy. So I brought back those same orange markers and I'm gonna add a little shadowing to these pumpkins, even though they're already on orange cardstock, it just brings them to life. It gives them character. It gives your card that extra little special something, but it's optional, right? On some cards, you wanna do all those extra things and maybe on some, you don't feel the need to. So here's what it looks like when I add color. I thought you'd want to see that. I did the two darker colors on the darker cardstock, the two lighter colors on the lighter. And I did four pumpkins. I think they're so cute in all these different sizes. The short, like squished one, the tall one, the tiny one, and then like kind of a more traditional size. I love it. I think they're so fun. You can totally use these for a fall related project or Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, I'm bringing in the tiny Halloween set. I'm going to use this a lot. I love this tiny little spider on the um, thread. So I'm going to add that to one pumpkin. I die cut out a moon from a light yellow cardstock and then I use the same circle to cut away from it so it would be a crescent moon. And now I'm just adding everything into this little card to create my scene. I've got a couple bats around the moon. You can see I took my yellow marker and added a little sh shading to that moon. And um, I thought it went well with the die cut. So it has shadowing too. And then every layer is just getting a pumpkin. You can see it, but the tallest one on that background. And then I'm adding pumpkins to the layers. I put a little ghost coming up from behind one pumpkin because, you know, at the pumpkin patch, they have a lot of fun little decoration-y things. So I thought that would be cute. And then I added my little boy there. He's so adorable. And then the jack-o'-lanterns are going to go in the front row as well as my little cat and some candy corns I'm going to add there on that open space. And that just like makes the scene. You got to have a little candy fun at your pumpkin patch party. Yeah. All right. So now for the front of the box, I'm going to add my sentiment. It says, have a fabulous day. That's from Tiny Halloween. And then I am bringing in Henry Jr.'s ABCs, the stamp set. I love that they have multiples of all the letters so I could spell out the word pumpkin and I have two P's. I can line it up because the letters are square, like the rubber is left around the letters square so you can line them up together. It's so cool. All right, I added a dusting of color in wilted violet for the first sentiment and then the same carved pumpkin as I used to stamp the letters went around the edge of that sentiment. And you can see I just cut around them with my paper cutter to trim them out. I am using a black liner pen to add detail to those stamped letters. And I think it just makes them even more special with the touch of black on there. And then I'll add those to the front panel of my pop-up card. And then to accent that, I've got a bunch more candy corns. So I stuck those down. And then I wanted a little bit of glitter. So I have the Lawn Fawn glitter pen. I'm going to add the glitter to my candy corns and some of of my pumpkins in my scene. Now the pumpkin faces I did on the side of the box are glitter paper so those are already sparkly and there's a spot on the back to write your personalized sentiment. A little happy birthday card for a Halloween baby I think is so fun. So there you have the card and now we're going to make some party favors to go along. I had already pulled out that jack-o'-lantern add-on for the tiny gift box so why not make some tiny gift boxes and I'm going to put these on a stick. Okay. So I am going to make three of these. You can see you can die cut three from one piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'll sh I'm showing you that here. And then we're going to put this together. So I decided to give my pumpkins, my jack-o'-lantern faces, a little yellow glow behind them. And then I wanted to show you the little stem part. It's like a tiny little box that you fold up and there's tabs that you put the glue on. I find it easiest to put the glue on the end tab and then glue up the top and the bottom. So um, it's kind of so tiny. It's hard to show here, but there you see 
kind of what it looks like. It's skinnier at the bottom and fatter at the top, and you could put the stem down either way. So I'll show you how I stick it down on the box when we get to that part. But there's the stem, it's pretty cool. All right, so now to assemble the box, I like to do, I'm not, I messed up here, but I haven't made one of these in a while. I like to do the two tabs that attach the back of the box, like where the flap is for the lid. I do those two first, and then I like to do the two flaps that put the front of the box, which actually is the back. So you always want this tiny gift box to open in the back. The face is always going to go on the front. And this is easy to tell with this jack-o'-lantern because the back piece has that little notch cut out and then the face part does not, but it's always going to open in the back. They always have the faces in the front. So that's a little confusing <laughs> from how I described how to put it together, but you can see what I mean in the video. I added some little shadowing to the face with my yellow marker, which is Y18, and then I glued it down. I'm adding this little piece like is the, the base of the stem. I added a glue dot to that and then a glue dot and some glue to the stem itself because I want that thing to stick down and stay there. And then I added the little vines and the little leaves because that just makes it. Those little details just make this so cute. All right, so there's the box itself, but remember, I'm gonna put it on a stick. I have these lollipop sticks, so I decided I'm gonna poke a hole in the bottom of the box, try to make it you know, large, but I still want it to be tight on the stick. But when I stuck the stick through, it ripped the paper a little bit. So I brought in this die, which makes like a hole reinforcer. It's from a tag die set that I own from Trinity Stamps. And so I just put that around the spot that I kind of ripped. I put one on the outside and the inside of the box. And it is very secure now. But to make sure it does not come out, I added a little hot glue around the stick on the inside. And you can see a little bit of it pokes up on the inside of the box, but that's okay. You could throw some candy in there, tie a little ribbon all around it like I did. This is some black like organza ribbon with glitter in it. I found it at the thrift store, so I'm using it all over the place. But when I made the other two, I found it much easier to put everything on the box while flat, except the stem. I added that later. Even the stick, the like the part for the stick I added, and then I put the box together, added the stick, added the stem, added the bow, and it was so much easier to do that way. So if you mass produce these, that's my suggestion. So now let's move on to the gift tag. I am bringing out one of my favorite sets. It's the pumpkin house, but you don't have to use it to make a house every time, right? So I'm gonna use this to make a tag. I'm using the exact same markers, but I'm using all three of the colors to add shadowing to this. So it's YR27, YR07, and YR02. And I'm gonna do across the bottom and across the top, and you'll see here what it looks like. You know, on all my greenery, my leaves, my vines, my stems, I did bring in some markers to add shadowing to that as well. I added that darling little spider to it because I think it's so cute, um, but you know, not in real life. Just in stamps, our spider's cute, by the way. All right, so let's add our sentiment, which is you are spooktacular. That's also from Tiny Halloween. I also wanted to do happy birthday. And so I brought in the Oh Gnome stamp set because I felt like the font matched the font of you are spooktacular the best. And I love that the words happy and birthday were separate. So I'm um, going to give them a little dusting of color too, just like on my box. I stamped another little pumpkin boy, a little, you know, little, what is that? Like a little bag, a pumpkin treat holder thing. You know, what is that called? It has a name, I'm sure. Anyways, he got one of those. I added some more candy corns and I just took a strip of paper and made a loop and added that to the back with some glue dots so I could put my black and white baker's twine through there and this tag is ready to go. <clears throat> like hang it on a gift bag would be really cute. So there is my gift tag. I had so much fun with these projects. Here you can see all three together and I think that they are absolutely adorable, but there's also some other really cute things in this hop. So you'll find all the things you need below for the hop giveaway, for there's actually multiple giveaways, and where to go next on the hop in the description box below. So make sure you do that. Show some love to the Fab Five on their one year birthday, and I will see you on the next video very soon. Happy stamping!
Bye.